Hello, my name is Margaret Adell. I have been working with indie authors for about two years now. I have reviewed over a hundred self-published books, and I feel like I've been really in-depth in the community at this point, despite not being an indie author myself. And I've had a fantastic time. I've made a lot of friends, had a lot of great interactions, read a lot of good books. It is overall a positive experience. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today, we are talking about the more cringier, dare I say problematic things that indie authors will do online, primarily on Twitter, because that is where I spend most of my time and interactions with indie authors, although you can make an argument for Instagram, and if you know of any like Instagram specific cringy things, please like comment those down below. I would love to read about them. But uh, we are going to talk about the things that indie authors do in reference to their books that we're not talking about, you know, when an indie author you know, comes out as, as racist or homophobic or whatever, because that is kind of par for the course for everyone. Um, but indie authors specifically, because they self-publish their own books or are from such a small press that that press might need help, they are often responsible for their own promotion. And this can be done very well or very badly. And it's really, really bad when you do it badly because there is not a very large reader base for indie books. It is much smaller than the traditional book reader base. So you are fighting for a much smaller piece of the pie. And you need to keep that in mind. If you get written off as one of those cring cringy indie authors, you're losing sales. <laughs> you could be losing readership. It is very imperative to put your best foot forward. So please be aware of everything I am about to talk about and avoid them at all costs. First up is the most obvious and could be the most innocent of all of these, but it's really something you need to avoid, and that is spamming promotional posts multiple times a day. You really shouldn't do more than one or two promotional posts a day. Now, I have spoken to indie authors, and they've said that a, a pinned tweet at the top of the feed is really kind of pointless. It very rarely uh, gives you any sort of click-throughs. So a tweet over the course of the day is to be expected. But when you start spamming those repeatedly is when you start losing followers. No one wants to feel like they're following a corporate account. So if I get on my Twitter and my feed is majority promotional posts from indie authors, that is a signal to me to start unfollowing people. This also relates to other people's posts. And I get it. Everyone's trying to help each other out. It's awesome. But again, if my feed is 90% promotional posts, people telling me to buy a book that have been retweeted from someone else's Insta uh, Twitter feed, I'm still going to be unfollowing. I'm going to see, okay, who's retweeting all of these things into my timeline. I probably should unfollow that person. I am on Twitter. And this is for the same reasons that a lot of other people are. I want social interactions. And it's awesome getting to connect with indie authors. It's awesome getting to talk with them after I've read their books and being able to talk about the books in depth and, and joke around about the characters. It's great. So you need to keep in mind that you should be acting like a person on Twitter, not a corporate account. If 90% or even half of what you tweet in a day is just you sharing your book link, you're doing it wrong. And I guarantee you, you are probably scaring people away from following you. And a lot of those followers you probably have are also other people spamming book links. It is social media. People want to be social, so you need to act like a person. <laughs> This next one is very um specific, and this might be a personal pet peeve of mine, but this is indie authors complaining online that the free book giveaway they did didn't net them reviews. So this is very common. Indie authors will either put their book for free on sites like BookBub, or make it free on iBooks or Amazon, or they'll do uh, temporar temporarily free giveaways over X amount of days. That's not going to get you a lot of reviews. I'm going to tell you right now, I have actually read a lot of books that I've gotten for free off BookBub or from those deals, and I've loved a lot of them, and it's kickstarted my love of entire authors and entire series. But in a lot of cases, fun fact, it could have been like an entire year between me downloading that free ebook and me randomly stumbling across it while scrolling through my Amazon trying to find a specific book for a readathon that year later. Like, you you really have to accept that while, yes, it could get your book out there, the results, if they come, will come very far down the line. So you complaining that this three-day free giveaway you did where you gave away the ebook for free 
that it didn't get you reviews. It just seems like you don't really know the ins and outs of the, the indie arena. It's not going to work. If you want reviews, you need to get very, very studious. I highly suggest checking out different booktubers or different bloggers and requesting reviews respectfully and in accordance with their review policy. I am very lenient and I feel like I might be giving the wrong impression to a lot of indie authors because I'll accept things like Twitter and Goodreads and in, uh, Instagram DMs and a lot of reviewers won't. It will have to be email only or nothing else. Email is always going to be the safest bet in requesting any reviews. Which leads us to the next thing that uh, indie authors do poorly and that is asking for reviews by tagging reviewers in a public tweet and then asking with a link to the book. This is very not good. Majority of reviewers, even if they are more lenient like me, don't want to be publicly requested because best case scenario, I either feel forced into accepting a book that I'm not that interested in, or I might be interested in it, but the fact that you asked publicly puts like a, a weird damper on my mental space when I'm trying to read it, or I look like a jerk because I'm going to say no or just ignore you. Now, I've actually seen reviewers that, like, will screenshot those and, like, name and shame, and I'm not here for that. That's not a good look for the reviewer. Yes, it is cringy. Yes, it's not a good look, but really, your best bet is to either politely inform them of the right way to do it or just, you know, look like a jerk and ignore it. I'm not saying you are a jerk. I'm just saying some people might think you look like one. So the next one is similar to the spamming posts, but uh, this one is spamming comments to tweets that your book isn't really relevant to, if it's relevant at all. So, for example, I have often done these kind of, I'm looking to buy indie books. I am looking for indie books that are X. And after doing this several times, I realized that I almost always have to tag on, do not post your book if it is not X. I will not buy it. <laughs> because so many times when I said, hey, I'm looking for X kind of indie book, I'll get so many authors that reply and they'd be like, well, it's not exactly what you're looking for, but... And they'll post a link. No. <laughs> Twitter kind of sucks when it comes to threads with a large amount of comments, and it is very easy for comments to get lost. And it would be so aggravating if you're an indie author and there's this person asking for a book type, and it is exactly your type of book, and you're like, awesome, this is it, I have a possible new favorite reader, and you post it, and it gets lost in a sea of people spamming completely unrelated books on the one in a million off chance that they'll get a sale. Please respect that readers have tastes and they know what their tastes are and you posting something outside of those tastes, well, yes, there is a slim chance that you'll get some kind of sale out of it. In all actuality, there's a much greater chance that you're just going to look annoying. <laughs> also, uh, this applies to any kind of post in which someone is talking about books, but they're talking about things they don't like in books. I don't like X trope. Do not reply to that tweet and be like, well, my book doesn't have that trope, and then post the link. No. <laughs> maybe. Maybe if someone says, wow, I really, really love books of this type, and your book is that type, you could be like, well, hey, if you like books of that type, I have this one. Even then, that might be cringy, and I would highly suggest only doing this for people that you've already interacted with in a non- buy my book way, but it's much more likely to get you a sale and less likely to look cringy than you spam posting the book on any tweet that could even have any like tiny bit of relevance to the genre or themes of your book. In general, if you're on the fence as to whether or not you should post the link, don't. This one might be a hot take and it might be a pet peeve of mine, but I have to say it. The authors that go on and on and on and on and on about how this book is their baby, their heart, their soul. This is not good. <laughs> because although you might truly believe that, that's not really true. 
Writing is a skill and an art form that needs to be edited and proofread and worked over. You are going to improve as a writer. And while the concepts and plot structures may be near and dear to your heart, you still have to understand that you are probably still getting things wrong. <laughs> and it's, it's of course bad when reviewers review something that is from your heart and they hate on the themes out of themes of racism or homophobia or, you know, hating on it because it doesn't reflect their specific worldview. But if someone's saying like, hey, the nonlinear storytelling was really muddy for me, that's not them insulting you as a person. And this kind of over-the-top dramatic, my book is my baby type of rhetoric online scares people away. Because if I read that and I don't like it, well, now I know I can't tell you. Or I, I can't, do I, do I risk posting the review that I had some struggles with this book that is your soul, apparently? That kind of puts it on the reviewer of like, oh god, what are they going to do if I post a review that's like two stars? Should I risk it? And most of the time, they won't. They won't risk it. They'll be like, oh, I feel like this person's a little bit too close to the flames for me. I'm going to go read something else from an author that understands how writing works. Now the last one. Again, this could be a discourse in itself, and it's something that's been talked about a lot recently. But this is the idea of if you as an indie author start openly, repeatedly disparaging the concept of negative or critical reviews online, be prepared for people to not want to buy and review your books. Now this could be anything from implying that a low star review is just someone trolling, implying that uh, a mutual or a friend in the writing community uh, giving your book a low star is some kind of betrayal. It's not. Your friends don't owe you high star counts and high star reviews. That's not what they're there for. That's not what the writing community is there for. The writing community is dedicated to the craft and the betterment of writing. So you getting pissy because you assumed your writer friends would always give your book four or five stars is not a good look. Or in general, you know, calling out specific reviewers because you didn't like their review. And again, I am not talking about reviews that are laced with any of the isms, homophobia, racism, uh, misogyny, any of that. I am specifically talking about these good faith reviews in which someone's like, hey, this craft aspect of the story was iffy. This plot choice not a fan of it. If you start disparaging those reviewers for those thoughts and calling them out directly, be prepared for A, you to become discourse on Twitter for a day, and B, your readership to tank. I have watched so many people announce that they are not going to read from indie authors that say these kind of things. I actually have a will not review indie author list that is made up of any indie author I see. One time, there was actually this entire thread of people complaining because one person st stated that a friend in the writing community had given them a one-star review, and obviously this was trolling, and obviously this was a betrayal, and obviously this was them just trying to promote their own book, and all of the replies were, I don't see why anyone would do one-star reviews. They're just mean. Obviously that person was trolling, and so on and so forth. I went through that thread, and I looked for every indie author that said those things, and I put them on my will not review list. Because I'm not gonna risk that nonsense. <laughs> if you're gonna be bad mouthing critical reviews, I don't even wanna risk it. Maybe I would love your book. Maybe I would give it a five star and end up loving the entire series and, and praising it to the moon and back. We'll never know. I'm not even gonna try. Because there are so many other indie authors who are accepting of low star reviews, who understand that it's just part of the craft, who understand that reviews aren't for them, that are going to be like a much better business partnership or even friendship for me than the indie author that's complaining. And no, I don't feel bad about putting those indie authors on that list. You clearly don't understand the concept of good faith reviews. You clearly don't understand what it means to publish your book and put it into the world. And why would I risk it? In general, I don't mean to bring down the entirety of the indie author community. Like I said before, I have had just as many fantastic types of messages. I've actually done a video of all the really sweet messages indie authors have sent me, and I wanted to do more of a, like, the, the friendships I've made from indie authors in the community, and I probably will make that video at some point, but... You gotta be careful when you are your own PR person, when you are the person trying to get your book out into the world, 
if you do it in the wrong way, you're only hurting yourself. You're only becoming that indie author and people will mute you, unfollow you, block you, put you on a will not read list. It will only hurt you. When it comes to indie books, the concept of any publicity is good publicity does not factor in. You do not have that large of a readership to pull from. You cannot make it work. <laughs> so be careful what you say online. That's just good life advice in general. Be careful that you aren't becoming more of a corporation or more of a business than a person online. People want to be social. They want to make connections with you as a person. So be sure to always include just things that aren't you promoting your book or maybe you talking about your book in more personable ways and not always insisting and trying to harp again and again buy my book. You can totally build a following and yes, get sales and readership out of it. So I want to know uh, if there's any I missed on this list. Is there any cringy online interactions you've had with an indie author that you really think other indie authors should be aware of? Please post those down in the comments. I'm not trying to do a big shot in for you to thing, but like, I still feel like even after two years, there are new niches in the community that I am just now discovering, and I would love to know more. And with nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.